Welcome to podcast number eight from chapter seven. We're going to talk about how materials are transported in and out of the cell. And the first one we're going to talk about is passive transport. What is passive transport? This is the movement of materials without the use of energy. So this just happens naturally. And it happens naturally because you're using what is called a concentration gradient. All right, now we're going to use brackets to mean concentration. And the word gradient just means hill. Okay, and remember concentration. What we're talking about is concentration of a solute, something that is dissolved in a solution. But from the world of chemistry, we're going to use brackets because concentration is too many letters to write. So that just is what we're going to use our symbol for concentration. So here's how we would draw a concentration gradient. Just going to draw a triangle. And at the top, we have a high concentration of something. And at the bottom, we have a low concentration of something. And think of like you've got a skateboard at the top of the hill. It naturally, because of gravity, wants to go this way. Now, as we go down the concentration gradient, we're eventually going to create a situation which is called equilibrium. And equilibrium, you know, the root word is equal. So when things are equal or at an equilibrium, the molecules or the substance is going to move this direction and it's going to move that direction at an equal rate. All right, so you want to make sure that you know how to draw the concentration gradient. And this is going down the concentration gradient, and this requires no energy. All right, make sure you know that. That, that is a absolute must in this chapter. All right, now, passive transport comes in three different flavors. The first one is diffusion. This is any molecule moving down the concentration, and you have all come across this. Uh, for example, uh, somebody sprays air freshener in, a, in one part of your house, and it diffuses through all of the house, and so you'll smell it in other rooms. Uh, you've probably been gone home after school. You sit down. You're watching SpongeBob, and all of a sudden you smell pizza. Mom's cooking a pizza in the uh, kitchen high concentration of pizza molecules, a low concentration in the living room and the TV where you're at, the molecules have diffused from the kitchen, high concentration, to the living room, which is a low concentration. The second type is called osmosis. And this is simply diffusion. You're moving from an area of high concentration to an area of low concentration. For example, you're going down the concentration gradient, but this is a special one. It's the diffusion of water only. All right. So osmosis is one of the most important things that happens when you're talking about cells. you got to get water in and out of the cell. And we're going to talk about that in depth just a little bit. The final one is called facilitated diffusion. And if you know what the words mean, facilitate simply means to help. So this is diffusion with a little bit of help. And you're going to use a special protein called a carrier protein. And we have a picture that shows you this uh, coming up just a little bit later in this podcast. All right, now, the best way to remember this is, what are the three types of passive diffusion? Or, I'm sorry, passive transport? DOF, D-O-F. Diffusion, osmosis, facilitated diffusion. D-O-F, DOF. All right, so what is diffusion? Once again, it's the movement of molecules from an area of high concentration to an area of low concentration. You're moving down that concentration gradient. And as you see in this picture, uh, basically what we have here is we have two glasses and that is ha getting a drop of yellow food coloring. And as you can see, at the top, you're going to have a high concentration and it's moving to the area where there's a low concentration. Now, you may notice that this one over here, the diffusion rate is faster and a couple of reasons that this can happen. All right, so we're going to write this down. What can influence, let me get caught up here, the rate of diffusion? Well, 
and we'll put them over here. All right, number one. We're going to call this the steepness of the gradient. Things are going to travel faster down a very steep one as compared to a flat, whoops, that's a bad looking triangle, a flatter triangle. All right, so the fusion rate on this one is going to be a lot steeper than it is on this one. Think of like which one's going to be more fun to sled down, this one or that one? Obviously, that one's going to go a lot faster. All right, number one is going to be temperature. Uh, what happens is the hotter something is, the faster it is. All right, so what you see here is. Over here, when this one was going faster, maybe this is hot water and that was cold water. So this one was going much slower. Right? So the two things that are going to influence the rate of the fusion the most is the steepness of the concentration gradient and the temperature. If it's colder, less diffusion. If it's hotter, more diffusion. All right, what the heck is osmosis? All right, now, in this podcast, it doesn't work very well for me to hit this link, but if you will hit this link, this will take you to a website, and it's going to explain uh, what's going on in a slightly different manner than what I am. But remember, osmosis is diffusion of water across a biological membrane. When we talk about a biological membrane, we simply mean cell membrane, a nuclear envelope, uh, the outer membrane on a mitochondria, anything that's that phospholipid bilayer. All right, now, remember... Stop our animation here for a second. Any membrane is selectively permeable. And what selectively permeable means, change our colors here. Selectively permeable means some stuff can get in and out, others can't. All right, so mainly what happens is one, or actually a small molecule can get through, big molecules cannot. And that's what you're seeing on, going down on here in this animation. Water molecules are very, very small. They're the small blue circles. And as you can see, this line right here, this is the membrane, and it's got the little pores in them. And these pores would be like the nuclear, or I'm sorry, the, the channel proteins that we saw in our previous con, or our podcast. These big green circles, which are sugar molecules, very large molecules, you know, C6, H12O6, they can't fit through the little holes. And so what happens is, is that, Osmosis is trying to reach an equilibrium, and the best it can do is add water to the inside of the cell. All right? So this is a perfect example of what's going on in osmosis. Now, when you want to talk about osmosis, you got to know the tonic words, most often referred to as tonicity, T-O-N-I-C-I-T-Y, but I just call them the tonic words because I think it's just easier. The first one is hypotonic. Hypotonic means high concentration of water, low concentration of solute. The word specifically refers to this low part. All right? I always remember it as hypo equals mo. Mo water in a hypo. Now, if you put something in one of these, the cell will expand. So a hypotonic solution outside the cell, water moves into the cell, it will expand. The next one is hypertonic. Hyper is low water, high amount of solute. The hyper part refers to the high part. Okay? I always remember it as hyper gets smaller. Why this makes sense is that water will leave it and a cell will shrink. All right? So if you want to remember this, hypo means more or mo more water hyper I always remembered as this hyper is smaller why do you have smaller because you have less water arrow down meaning less but remember the words really deal with how much solute there is hyper you know very hyperactive you got high activity high amount of solute if you have a lot of solute you have less water hypo means you're low low solute, which will mean you'll have more water. Okay, hope that wasn't confusing to you. All right, iso simply means the same. An isotonic solution is the same on both sides. 
And so think of like this. This would be like contact solution. It's the same on the outside of your eye as it is on the inside. It doesn't hurt it. So when you put a cell in a isotonic solution, there's no change in shape. Doesn't shrink, doesn't swell, stays perfect. It's like mama bear or, or uh, baby bear says this one's or Goldilocks. That was it. Goldilocks says this one's just right. All right. Now the next thing is extremely important. Is why it's in red. Water. Let me pull this up. Water will move from an area of hypotonic to an area where it's hypertonic in order to become isotonic. So what this basically means is you move from high to low until everything's equal. Because in an isotonic solution, things are doing this. So it's no different than what we learned about in diffusion. You're moving from an area of high concentration to an area of low concentration until equilibrium is released. All right, got this perfect picture in here. Okay, in a hypotonic solution, the water molecules have moved in. It's moved in so much that this cell has burst. And that's what lice means. The word lice means to break. So this cell has broken open. All right, so this is an animal cell. These up here are animal cells. And down here we have a plant cell. Plant cells cannot burst open because of the cell wall. And so plant cells like to be in an iso or I'm sorry, a hypotonic solution because that makes this cell push out and it stands up nice and stiff. And this is what turgid means. Basically it means stiff. The plant is standing up just the way it should be. All right. In an isotonic solution, you have equal amounts of water coming in. Or I'm sorry, equal amounts of water coming in, equal amounts of water coming out. Plants don't like to be this, all right? This would be a flaccid, and what flaccid means is it's it's starting to wilt, all right? Plants like to be in a hypotonic solution. If you put them in an isotonic one, and they're they're a little limp, you know. Another word for flaccid is limp. All right, now in a hypertonic solution, so much water has moved out that this cell has shrunk. Very dangerous. Here we have it's plasmalized. What has happened is the cell membrane, and that's what this line is right here. I'm going to put CM for cell membrane. It has shrunk away from the cell wall, which is all this stuff right here. CW for cell wall. And so this spot right here, this is all just empty space. And this is very, very dangerous for the plant cell. All right, this is a very important diagram for you to know. So make sure you understand all this. If you don't have if you don't quite understand this completely, definitely ask your teacher. Step up to the genius bar and get this, you know, go over this a little bit more. All right, facilitate diffusion. Remember the word facilitate means to help. And this is simply osmosis, or I'm sorry, it's a type of diffusion. It's passive transport. You're going from an area of high concentration to an area of low concentration. But these molecules are too big. They can't fit through the membrane. They can't squeeze in between these phospholipids. So they have to go through a very special protein called a carrier protein. It helps carry it across the membrane. And as we can see here, here's your carrier protein. The carrier protein acts pretty much like one of those automatic doors. As this protein fits right in here the shape changes and it just kind of automatically opens and it's going to push it down oops you know let's train let's trade this this is going to push its way down and as it does this let's go with this green see how it changes shape and it'll close once it gets through so it's just like an automatic door that you'd find at like any kind of store where it just as you step on the mat or you walk in front of the sensor it just opens up all right, that is going to end our podcast today. Uh, make sure you check out the next one, podcast number nine, when we talk about active transport.